There's a wild story about Paul McCartney and Eric Clapton being at a Jimi Hendrix concert. And Hendrix comes out and in the very first song, he's just using his whammy bar and just doing these dive bombs. Woo! You know, all the crazy stuff that he does. And Paul McCartney and Eric Clapton are looking at each other in the audience going, wow, this is the first song. He's gonna be so out of tune. What's he gonna do? And sure enough, they end the first song. And of course, this is before we had all these gadgets and things you can just clip on and tune right away or full on pedal boards. And so Hendrix is up there way out of tune. And he's like, I thought I saw Eric Clapton. Eric, are you out there? He's like, can you come tune my guitar? And Eric was like hiding in the corner and he didn't go up and tune the guitar. But the point is, is that Hendrix had a lot of respect for Eric Clapton and Eric Clapton as well. Eric was actually influenced by Hendrix quite a bit. And so today I wanna to share with you a lesson on a song that Eric Clapton did with Cream, Sunshine of Your Love, but Jimi Hendrix's version. And this is a version that I first heard from the album Valleys of Neptune, which actually was released after Hendrix died. But it's a really awesome version of Sunshine of Your Love. So let's get straight into it. The first riff goes like this. Three, four. <laughs> All right, so this is a really amped up, high energy version with just some powerhouse playing from Jimi Hendrix. Now, he's tuned down a half step, and so I'm tuned down to match that, and then we're gonna play in the key of B. Now, the original version is in D, but Hendrix starts out here on the ninth fret of the fourth string. He goes nine, nine, seven, nine. Okay, so that's the first part. And then instead of going like what Clapton does, Hendrix, of course, does octaves. Which is just such a cool sound. So you've got the ninth fret on the fifth string and then the 11th fret on the third string. And we're gonna walk down nine, eight, seven. And I'm just counting where my index is, but I'm keeping that octave shape the same. So there's one fret between my fingers. And I use index pinky. You can use index and ring if that's more comfortable for you. I just, this feels more comfortable for me. So we walk down, nine, eight, seven, then play the ninth fret on the fourth string, seventh fret on the third string, and then a quick pull off from nine to seven on the fourth string. And then you just sort of hammer on from nowhere to the ninth fret of the fifth string. So it's like. So I don't actually pluck that last note there. And that's something Hendrix would do all the time. So this first lick sounds like this. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. And he's adding a lot of vibrato in between. And also you'll hear throughout this recording a lot of like just little scratch strums in there. So that might be something like this, like. So chicka doom ba ba da dum And those riffs are coming right out of the B minor blues scale. And if you haven't learned your blues scales yet anywhere on the neck, I wanna give you a gift that's gonna help you out with that. And what it is, is my free blues scale PDF guide. And on it, I show you the five blues scale patterns I use to map out the entire neck. And this is exactly what Jimi Hendrix is using in this song and in countless blues recordings. So you can get this completely for free. Just go to johnmclennan.com slash bluescales and grab that as my gift to you. So after this first time, he goes. Then he does this, he goes. And I love this because it's Clapton, but it's Jimmy putting his own twist on it. And let me show you what I mean. So Clapton, a lot of times, like I covered an acoustic version of this song on my channel as well, a rare Clapton acoustic version, and Clapton plays these triads. He goes. He does it in D, but he 
he does it up there. So Hendrix does this, but what does he do? He adds this one note, okay? He adds the ninth of the scale. He adds this note C sharp on top, which makes the chord like a B add nine to an A add nine, and then back up. So he goes, okay, so the chord there is nine, eight, seven, nine. And then he gets even crazier here. Instead of doing octaves, or like Clapton, where he, Clapton does single notes. What does Hendrix do now? He plays a whole chord on the riff. Oh, that's so cool. And then of course with the tone and everything that Hendrix is doing, he's using a wah a lot on this recording and it's just all of that adding up gets an amazing sound. So the second time, first time is octaves, second time is full chords. And then he goes, Okay, this is tricky here. This is the ninth fret on the fourth string. He does the seventh fret and does a, a pull there that's a whole step with the index finger. Now, index finger bends can be tough because you can't put your other fingers behind, right, to back up the bend. But here you gotta, and then do nine, pull off to seven, and then it's basically the same. The hammer on from nowhere like we did the first time. So the second time goes. And then again, octaves the third time. And then the fourth time, back to full chords. So he's using different, you know, versions. Sometimes he does the octaves, sometimes he does the full chords, but there he's alternating in the intro. And I'm sure there's a live version where he plays it completely different. But just having some of these ideas and then working them into your playing is going to get you a Hendrix style sunshine of your love. So from here, he goes into a bit of the melody with the riff. And that's going to sound like this. All right, so it's almost like, I'm with you, my love, you know, or, or it's getting near dawn, right? The, the opening melody there. But what he does is he bends up the 10th fret on the second string, then natural, then back up. So it's, and then walks down octaves, just like the intro. Then the second time he does a little variation, he goes, that's the same, and then bend nine on the third string twice, and then go to seven on the third string and just hold that note with some vibrato. So it's one and two and three and four and one and. So those two riffs together sound like this. Three, four. Okay, then we have a little pickup. And that's the same as before. You know, it's getting near dawn, but we're gonna start with this pickup. Seven on the second string and then go into it. So it's like three and four and one and two and, right? So. Octaves. And then he has this va variation. Okay, and this is starting to get into some bigger bends here. This is bending the 10th fret, 10, 10, natural, 10. Then he goes up to 12 and bends a step and a half. So that's two bends. And then he kind of falls off. So it's one and two and three and four and... And then he goes, Then we go into basically the four chord. This is now doing the same kind of thing. Like if, if you thought of this, okay, your B minor blues scale, which again, 
you can get on my free blues scale guide, that's gonna be based off the seventh fret. Then he goes up to the four chord, which is gonna be E, and he goes. It's the same thing, it's just higher up the neck, but he leads into it with this. And that's just 12 on the second string and 12 on the first string, alternating back and forth. And then 15, two bends, natural, then bend one more time up. So it's, then back to the riff. Now here, instead of doing it over the B, now we're doing it over the E chord, so we're starting on the seventh fret of the low E string and the ninth fret on the fourth string. That's our octave shape. We go down one fret at a time, then go all the way up to 14, hit 12 on the third string, and then it's the same lick from our B minor scale. Now we're just doing it over the E. So it's Then we start to get into some serious string bending, and this is something Hendrix would do all the time. Two whole step bends, you know, Albert King would do this too. It's just, just extreme. So here we're bending the 15th fret. Okay, so what I'm doing there is 15, two bends, natural, Bend, natural, okay, and then I'm bending that two whole steps. That's D all the way up to F sharp. Three times, and then the third time, it just falls off. And Hendrix had this real floaty sound. It was, to me, it was just very psychedelic sound with those string bends. So he'd do those really big bends and then he'd just fall off and you just feel like you're floating. You're like, what note are we on? Where are we? But he was just like controlling that bend with his fretting hand. So backing up. And then we go back down to the riff on B, just using single notes there. Then the final time, he comes in with the chords again. And that's the whole melody section. And then we go on to the bridge or the B section. But let me back up and string these parts together so you can hear how the licks just flow from one to the next. Here's what it sounds like. One, two, three, four. Then we go to the bridge, and here, of course, Hendrix uses his classic Jimi Hendrix chord. We're gonna start on an F sharp seven sharp nine and play this. Okay, so these are the three chords we're using. Here's the Hendrix chord, starting on the fifth string, nine, eight, nine, ten. We're gonna go down, up, down, and then A. Okay, this is like an A bar chord here at the fifth fret. Five, seven, seven, six, five, five. But I play it Hendrix style with the thumb. And then an E, just a standard E bar chord, open seven, nine, nine, nine. Those are the three chords. So we just play one bar, F sharp seven, then A for two beats, E for two beats and repeat it three times. After the third time, we do this really cool riff. And we're 
back to the first part. So what I played there was just this big walking line and it reminds me of Hey Joe, you know? Kind of a typical bass line that Hendrix would do. I'm gonna play the note F sharp there and then go down to A sharp and walk up one, two, three, four. Okay, so. And then do the same thing on the next string down. One, two, three, four. Same thing on the next string down. One, two, three, four. And then on the third string, I'm just gonna play one, three. So I'm, I'm saying the fingers there because I'm just thinking in a position here, one fret per finger, walking up with this pattern, and then one to three on the last string. So it's gonna go. And then jump back to that B note right there. And you're back to the main riff. So here it is, the B section, one more time. I'm gonna play all of it as once, so all at once, so three times on the progression, F sharp, A, E, F sharp, A, E, F sharp, A, E, then the big bass line, and then I'll end with just that first riff going. Okay, get set and let's play it together. Here we go. One, two, three, four. So there you have it, a supercharged version of Sunshine of Your Love as recorded by Jimi Hendrix. Hope you enjoyed some of those licks. Be sure to take your time with this. And there's a lot of advanced like powerhouse guitar techniques in there, but Jimmy's style was just incredible. And remember that so much of this is just coming out of the blues scale. So you wanna make sure you know that. And to help you get that down anywhere on the neck, grab my free blues scale PDF guide. Just go to johnmcclennan.com slash bluescales or click the first link down below as my gift to you. As always, thanks for watching, and for more Jimi Hendrix, check out this video next.